Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in again. I am Kaylee Bateman, the Content Director at She Can Code, and in today's episode we're discussing testing portfolios and asking if we should all be creating one. You may have thought about creating a test portfolio, but where do you start and what do you include? Thankfully, I have the fabulous Beth Marshall, Senior Quality Engineer at Lloyd's Bank Banking Group with me today to dive into this topic. Welcome Beth, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And can we kick off the conversation with a little bit of an introduction about yourself uh, and how you got into the tech industry? Oh, yes, absolutely. So so I am Beth Marshall. I've been working in the field of uh, quality engineering, quality assurance, software testing, call it what you you like um, for the last 15 years now. Um, I have done uh, worked for lots of different companies, big, small, in between, from um, testing the world's, what was at the time the world's largest FX uh, trading platform, to a tiny Internet of Things startup company. Um, I, I love thinking like a customer, putting myself in their shoes and uh, trying to work with teams to make what goes out to customers the best it can be. Um, so that's why I love testing. Uh, recently, I've uh, joined Lloyd's uh, Banking Group, and there I'm helping with some um, training that they are giving to their uh, their quality engineers. So I'm really enjoying that part. Um, I've done some training for some other uh, platforms online, and I also help with uh, upskilling um people from non-traditional tech backgrounds, uh, my work with the Coders Guild. Uh, how did I get into testing? Like a lot of people you will speak to, um, I fell into it. Uh, I was working for a consultancy called BGSS. Um, I didn't know what they did. They happened to be a software testing consultancy. And um, they spotted an opportunity for someone who could string a sentence together to help them rewrite some of their uh, test cases and uh, I said yes and then I was at the time the first the first person to transition from a non-billable into a billable role um, in the company's in the company's history and I went on to just keep saying yes I was there for eight years and and ended a, a test manager there and and absolutely loved it so I'm very thankful that now testing quality engineering is a career that more people are aware of, particularly women. Um, I still think there's work to do there, but I'm I'm really grateful that more people know it exists because I'm such an advocate for it. I think it's an amazing field to work in. Um, you get to work from anywhere. You get to work with amazing people and do really interesting, interesting things every day. So, um, Yes, that's my story about getting into tech. Amazing. And, and, and I'm so pleased um, that you're on our podcast today because it actually testing is, is not something that we've covered um, before and something that I'm sure our listeners would, would love to hear more about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested, though, you just said that you you help people that don't come from a, a traditionally you know technical background. Is that because you didn't or were you that person that just was technically minded? You knew what you wanted to do at university um, or, you know, what what happened what happened there absolutely not um so so I was brought up in Grimsby in one of the most deprived uh one of the top 10 most deprived wards in the country so so I came from um an environment which was very much about um short-term work um you know people didn't really go to university where I grew up um, I was one of the first in my in my family to to go, and that was an aspiration of mine. But my aim at university was to get a good sounding degree from a good red brick university. Um, that was all I really wanted uh, to to allow me to to move out of Grimsby and and see what else was out there in the big wide world. Um, so my degree was in law and criminology at the University of Sheffield. And I knew when I did my degree, I did not want a career in law. Um, <laughs> but my degree has helped me in a way because it's helped me get that kind of chip off my shoulder of thinking that there's, there's no one now that intimidates me because I, I know I've um, 
you know, that they can, um, no one tries to intimidate me, but it, it would have been a self-imposed thing that I wasn't quite up to par with, with other people, I think. So, so my degree has helped me in that respect, but it means that I understand that, that you get great, fantastic people that don't have an equality of opportunity. And I think tech has been such an enabler in my life um, to be financially independent, um, to have a really interesting career, to help other people that I really want. That's a huge part of, of why I do do the additional training. So I like knowing that, you know, testing quality assurance is a it's a career in and of itself that's that sustained me for 15 years, but it's also a great gateway into learning about technology, learning about this 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 career of tech and all the different job roles you can get. Um, quality assurance tends to have a lower, slightly lower bar of entry, so it doesn't necessarily demand, as a developer would, uh, can do, demand um, a degree or higher level uh, quali- bar to to get in um and you get to work with so many different elements as part of your job so you will work with user researchers you will work with developers you'll work with senior stakeholders you'll work with customers you you get your fingers in lots and lots of different pies and um i think that's something that means it's very appealing to people from different backgrounds it's it's a really nice gateway to get in not be overcome by the techie side of it um and more and more people now in in things like uh boot camps um short-term government funded schemes um like those done by places like the coders guild um are that avenue for people like we've had waitresses that have retrained to to become quality engineers and are now working now working in that field or we've had um you know people from just completely different backgrounds that just they're just missing the opportunity that's the only thing they've got everything it takes in their head other than the confidence um and they've got that drive to learn and then knowing that you can enable someone or be part of their story to help them is a huge that to me is worth a heck of a lot of money um I would substitute you know I would substitute a 20,000 pound pay rise for that feeling of of knowing that you've made a difference to somebody else like that that's golden to me so yeah that's why I love that amazing yeah and and you're right there there is that feeling there's that misconception that you have to be technical to get into tech Mm -hmm. uh, which is why we love to hear about the the different types of roles um that are available uh on on this podcast because a lot of our ladies um are first and second jobbers and perhaps they don't know yet about all of the the career options that are available to them um for those that that don't know um could you maybe explain what a testing portfolio is I yes think something that we've heard but perhaps what on earth is it I think lots of people haven't heard of them but but when you explain the concept it kind of clicks quite easily so if you think of if you think of a CV and your CV is a, a list of what you've done where you've worked um it is essentially just a piece of paper or a document on a on a computer somewhere it doesn't necessarily tell people that much about what you can do in practical terms. So a lot of the time, as as someone that's interviewed, uh, been an interviewer for a lot for a lot of uh, various roles, um, it's quite difficult to tell the difference between someone who can talk the talk and someone who can walk the walk. Yeah. And having an ability to assess that in someone is fantastic it really opens it opens doors it means you you kind of see the person before you see the um just the kind of dry buzzwords on the cv so so for me my kind of personal um definition i guess is that a a test portfolio would be a selection of dynamic artifacts and they serve as a personal story of your growing achievements, knowledge and skill. So the I guess the important things there 
to know is that they're dynamic. So there's something that is working. Um, so working code or, um, uh, you know, we can, we can go on to some examples in a moment, but they, they tell your story. So I think something that CVs don't necessarily do is really get across who you, who you are and what value you can add. Um, and something that humans are intrinsically, they intrinsically do is, is have something called narrative bias. So stories make sense to us. That's why so many of our TV programs are about stories and they're also about journeys because people love seeing someone that started at A and then they get all the way to, to Z. Um, you know, that's, I think that's why we watch Strictly. So we used to have come dancing, which is let's just watch lots of professionals dance and they can already dance. But what we love is seeing someone that can't quite conquer something getting through it. And it's the story that we love because the human brains make sense of stories. So a, a portfolio allows you to almost uh, 10x or turbocharge what you may already have on your CV to open more doors for you, add more value for you to your target, um, to your target audience, whoever that might be. So that's a very long winded way of, of saying <laughs> what they are. It's, but yeah, I, you're right. I don't think many people would have heard of the term anyway, and probably mm. don't realize that the value um in it I, I suppose as well what's crossing my mind is if if you work in testing and uh and you know you're not quite in that developer role how do you what examples would you show in your portfolio because it must be quite difficult as a somebody that's in testing to show what they're doing how, how yes does that even work <laughs> yes this is square in the circle of testing because uh, uh if you're a ux designer you would be expected to have a portfolio of work. So websites that you've developed, things that you've been responsible for, that you can say, this is mine, this is what I did. Go and have a play with it and see if see if it's got the, the things in it that you like to see. It's a visible manifestation of what someone can do. Yeah. And isn't it persuasive? You know, doesn't that tell you something about someone? Um, and developers, similarly, similarly, they might have a similar thing. And testers sometimes, because we're helping teams improve quality, it's very hard to come up with an answer of what is it that you do? Show us what you do. Um, and the field is getting increasingly technical and there are more and more niches that there's a huge gap um, to fill them. So areas like security testing or accessibility testing or uh ux or you know increasingly test automation areas like that um there's a lot of work there to to learn that stuff um and maintain your knowledge of it so i think some things some examples that i that i used in my i wrote my own portfolio so some examples that i i used were um various test automation projects so I followed a course online, a free course, uh, and then I wrote working code to test a variety of, of websites. So things that it was important for me to show as a tester, I wanted to show that I could test throughout the stack. So what I mean by that is that I can test a website, a front, front end of a website in using automation. I can also test at the API layer. I can test at the unit test layer um i can do that in different languages and part of that for me was a confidence building exercise because there is a lot of weight of expectation of you need to be technical 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 and it can be overwhelming um so sometimes knowing you can do it because you've done it um really allows you to get help with that that confidence um, but it could be, you know, things that you might, examples you might want to have in your board. It might not be technical. You might want to have a Trello board with all the things you want to learn about a particular topic. And you can move through those and say, oh, look, I've done this. I've got this certificate or I've, I've moved this thing along. Um, you might want to have 
not code snippets that you take from work, obviously, I would never, ever advocate that. But if you've learned a technique, make some boilerplate code and store that somewhere where you can use it again, because you won't be in the job that you're in now forever. You know, you might be, but most people will move roles, particularly in tech, quite a lot. And so you don't want to be in the position where you've, you've done some amazing work in your job and that computer, that server's com completely wiped when you leave and you, you lose that knowledge. You can't get it back. So using your portfolio as almost an aid memoir or a, a list of, of cool things that you've done, that's another way that it can help you to grow and, you know, remind you of how far you've come. I, you know, it, it's um, interesting what you said there, because immediately I would think, as we spoke about, um, a portfolio is great for your CV. And you said about, you know, 10x is your CV. Absolutely great. You almost don't think of it as uh, as building your confidence, but also just figuring out what you know, mm -hmm. what uh, knowing what you can do, because I suppose it's, it's a great exercise for that. Perhaps you haven't sat down and thought about all the projects that you've worked on and all of the skills that you actually have until you sit down and actually lay them out. And it's always so interesting um, at She Can Code, we get, we talk to so many ladies that don't realize anywhere that they have a great story to tell. Um, and just to sit down and actually hear, you know, for them to figure out what they've done um, and why they're valuable, it's just a worthwhile experience anyway, wasn't it? I mean, it's going to ask you about the benefits of creating a portfolio, but it's far more than just standing out you know, uh, when, when you go for an interview. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I, I definitely think I, as women, something we don't necessarily do that often is celebrate our successes. We are pretty rubbish at celebrating the positive things about what we have achieved. Um, I know what, but well, personally, uh, it's something that I've always struggled to do. You don't want to really look like you're showing off or, you know, you don't want to put your head above the parapet. And actually this, this is, this allows you to do that in a way that I think is palatable um, because it's about, it's about your story. It's about seeing where, where it can take you. I completely agree with what you said. I think what's going through my mind now is where do you get started? You mentioned about examples um, and, and, and what to do, but where do you get started? Because like you said, you wouldn't include code that you've worked on for a project yeah. or anything like that. So I take it you couldn't just sort of take screenshots and add them somewhere. Like it, and, and as you mentioned, you could, you know, create something else. I mean, like, where do you get started on that, though? And, and how do you actually build it? Do you, you mentioned Trello boards or do you use GitHub or mm -hmm. what, what, what did you do yourself? So when I decided to do it, I think the things that were the things that were important to me and the things that I would probably advocate for, firstly, um, start small and then start even smaller than that and even smaller than that. Do not think your portfolio needs to be the thing that takes over your life for the rest of your life. You know, I heard I heard the, the recent podcast that you did with um, with Sandra and she's absolutely I absolutely agree with her that, you know, what, what I'm not advocating here is never being able to say no to, to doing this stuff. There might be a time in your career where this is more valuable than at other points, but it's something you can do. And then you can almost dine out on it for a while, you know, <laughs> um, and it allows you to make the most, it might be skills you already have that you just want to spotlight how much you know about something. It might be something that you, uh want to learn just learn more about and there are so many free resources that you can use it's almost overwhelming but just start with the why the what the how and the where so get a piece of paper fold that piece of paper up twice and then open it back out again and you'll have four four areas on that piece of paper in the third, top corner uh, write the word why and think about what you want to get out of a portfolio. Any portfolio it doesn't need to be test related. Think about why you are doing this. Who's your key 
uh, almost the, the person, the value that you want to get out of it. Do you want to use this to help leverage you to get a promotion at work, to move into a different team? Um, is it about increasing your confidence? Um, what's the purpose of it? What's the impact that you want it to have? The second section would be the what. So what tools and techniques do you want to use to help you to achieve your goal? So I might say it's important to me to test throughout the stack. So I'm going to look at Postman and I'm going to look at visual testing because I've not used that before and I want to practice that skill and I want to look at uh, J unit testing. So that's my that's my what. In the third section, take a look at the how. And that's really how are you how are you planning? What's your story? So are you using it to improve? Um, are you helping it using this to improve the confidence about the tools you use at work, for example? Um, and really the 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 kind of extra bonus point here in the how is adding on one extra cool thing. So what little cool thing are you going to do as part of this portfolio that's going to help you um, talk about this story to other people? So that might be, I want to learn about this, this tool, but they've had a really recent cool new feature that they've just released. So I definitely want to try that. Or, um, you know, the, the, there might be lots of little one cool thing. Just focus on one cool thing that you can do with it. And then the final section would be, uh, almost the the who, the when and the where. So alongside doing the thing, the value or the, the turbocharge or the 10x effect comes from telling people you've done the thing. Um, if it's just about your confidence, fine, store that code privately on GitHub. It's yours. It's yours forever. Um, if you want to really get value from it, make it into a story, make it something that you can use to tell other people. So whether that's you forming a learning co-op at work and doing this with other people and then saying to your manager, look at this, look at this thing that I've done. I want, I started here and I've ended up here. Promotion, please. Hello. Um, <laughs> or <laughs> whether that's increasing your availability on the community. So a community you're part of, you might use a portfolio to say, I'm learning about all this fantastic stuff. And in my experience, you would be absolutely amazed at the doors that will open for you, that will come to you, not you going to them, the opportunities that will present yourself from you telling people your story. So I was asked by, I, I was inspired to write my own portfolio by um, a fantastic, my tech hero called Angie Jones, if anyone doesn't know about her, please Google her. She's incredible. And um, she wrote an article about test portfolios that really made me see they they make sense. They, they sound like a logical thing to do here. It sounds like a, a worthy use of my time. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost me anything. Um, only, only the time it takes for me to put this together. And... Um, she saw that I did a blog post to say, this is my goal on my portfolio. This is what, what I would like to do. And every time I wrote a new test automation framework, I wrote a new blog that went alongside it to say, uh, this is how this works. Here's some screenshots of what it can do. Here's the cool thing that it did that I didn't know before. And now I learn. Um, and she, she saw that and she asked me to write a course um, for a platform called Test Automation University, which is an amazing, amazing, completely free resource for learning test automation. Um, and that was off the back of me saying, I want to learn about this particular tool. And these, these things happen a, a lot. And that's why I kind of, I have no agenda here. I have nothing to sell to be on this podcast speaking to you about. But I know if you are short on opportunities, especially in the current market that we're in, um, I think this is something that you can do to be seen, to be visible um, to, to other people, and it, it can genuinely help. Um, so, yeah, I, I would definitely doing say. doing it while it's fresh as well, isn't it? Fresh in your mind, your story. Um, instead of thinking back, you know, what did I do several years ago and how did I do it? 
you're right writing a blog as as you go kind of just cements what you did it keeps it nice and fresh mm -hmm. um, and reminds you later when like you said when you do want to go for that promotion or move jobs it's already there instead yeah. of thinking actually now I've got to fit in all of this time to go back and figure out what I actually did mm -hmm. um but just doing it gradually I suppose just getting in that mindset isn't it of of uh, uh recording it as as you go yes yes and that's the that's the real value um who are you going to tell that you've done this think about who you're going to tell and what's the best vehicle for telling them about that um and, and decide that from the off preferably and then you've got you've got something at the end of that 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 really will do its best to work for you because I think you know everyone knows about Daniel Kahneman and the kind of what you see is all there is heuristic um we if someone knows or can, you can be front of somebody's mind as oh that's that person that that cares about um performance testing or that's that person that cares about that particular thing well guess what you'll be the first person that they think of um, it doesn't mean you have to be an expert. And I would advocate for being completely honest about where you start out and where you'd like to get to. Be completely honest because mistakes are part of this journey. Absolutely. And I made a bunch. Um, but I was also able to reach out to people and everyone I asked for help gave me help because people genuinely do like seeing progress in other people and helping others. So don't be afraid to say uh this is this is my portfolio because I don't know something and I want to know that thing yeah that's that's completely fine people completely resonate with that yeah are you mentioned there Angie and and you know as one of um the people that that you you look to for inspiration are there any other favorite resources that you use any podcasts books any any anything that you turn to that you'd like to share with our listeners yes I'm a little bit obsessed I guess um given I'm I'm the first tester to appear on this podcast I'm I'm very I'm making it very quality engineering focus so I won't stop <laughs> um one of my favorite podcasts is a podcast called the testing peers and it's basically four people who who talk all things testing it's a very relatable podcast a very easy one to dip dip in and out of and they talk about their mistakes and their struggles as well which which I always find quite quite refreshing it refreshing that you know people aren't robots are they no. um there's the wonderful thing and one of the reasons why I advocate for getting into testing is the amazing community that is there so there are so many people that are happy to help you in the testing community on LinkedIn um on Twitter uh, maybe that'll come back a little it, it it lost a bit of popularity uh, recently um but certainly ministry of testing is a fabulous um fabulous community with lots and lots of resources for you to to dip your toe into and to try building your own portfolio and using this um using this to kind of leverage what you already know or what you want to learn to help you i suppose it's not just about um the resources that you use um but also expanding that network as you mm. said finding other people that make mistakes and reaching out and asking for help and um yes yeah, all, all um invaluable obviously uh, expanding your network um we all know that the tech industry has a diversity problem uh but how do you think we can encourage more women into tech particularly coding um, you mentioned that you support you know people from non-technical backgrounds coming in I suppose that's a really good start isn't it just kind of just spreading the word that you don't have to be technical to be in tech is a absolutely great start. <laughs> absolutely just I I am a fan of anything that makes tech less scary for people yeah that's my kind of uh that's my bag um that you're absolutely right um the diversity problem is still still a huge issue um and I don't think I think although helping at university level is is super valuable, if we're thinking about increasing the number of, of women in these roles, we can't afford for this to just start at university for that kind of outreach because the male female ratio is too skewed by then. 
you know, the damage has already been been done. Um, one of the things I'm hoping to to help, and one of the things they do at, at Lloyd's Banking Group is help with an initiative, a global initiative called the Code Club, which brings things like drones, pro programmable drones or robots into school for, for children as young as six, um, but, but really directed into upper, upper primary and, um, and secondary school age to get people hooked in, to get people interested in what tech can do and, and the power of coding. Because I really think we have a problem with digital illiteracy um, and almost there's almost a, a, a subclass, like a uh, the, there's almost a digital poverty line that people can be on TikTok for six hours a day, but they wouldn't be able to tell you how TikTok works or, or how it's built. And you yeah. miss out on so much in not having that knowledge. Yeah. Um, Just so, somebody making you curious enough as well. To somebody think, making you curious and someone <laughs> being, I, I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any um, anything better or anything more powerful than having a visible person that you can see doing things in your own personal network. So, um, I, you know, I found out recently that my mum, who's recently retired from teaching after 30 years, she got into teaching because she went into school one day and one of the teachers said, you know, you could do this, don't you? And she said, no, 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 not teach, not me. No, she was working in a factory or, you know, do trying to make ends meet. And someone someone gave her that nudge and that encouragement to say, look, if I can do it, you can do it. And I think we, there's no substitute for that, that one-to-one -one, um, pull for people. So trying to be as visible an example for other people um, is is one way but there's also so many so many digital courses so places like obviously she can code um tech up code first girls um coders guild there are so many initiatives now if you want it it is there for you and it is probably going to cost you nothing to explore this as a career option particularly as women because the industry really wants you it wants you so if you are sick of being in a job where you're a small fish in a big pond, it's really competitive. You work with lots of people. You don't enjoy it. It doesn't give you any value. Please, please think about working in tech because you will be a big fish um, because people really want you there. And that makes it that makes a huge difference to how much you, you like your job day to day. So I, I think, yeah, as much as we can do to encourage women in tech. Um, not only to get into tech but also to stay um we we should be doing and I am seeing real change there from you know from where I was 15 years ago I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of good progress so more to come hopefully yeah because I think it sounds very daunting to a lot of people doesn't it and uh, we we held a hackathon recently and um most of the ladies that attended had never been to a hackathon they were talented they were taking boot camps um, but they, I think it's that that worry, you know, of I've never been in an environment like that. I might have just gone through, a, you know, my first boot camp. Um, but what, what is it going to be like, let alone starting a career mm. um, in technology? And and us as a team, all we could think was the amount of ladies in here that companies would just be dying. Yes. To um, <laughs> because they, they, you know, like you said, they want you at their company and they would be willing to you know um teach you what you need to know and fill in those gaps because that those ladies were there with you know they were learning um, and picking up the skills that they needed um but it was just giving them that environment to to feel like you know it's tech isn't as scary as you think it is yeah um, uh, and here are other people that are feeling exactly the same way as you um so i i completely agree um uh, with with what you said and um, we are almost out of time, but I wanted to ask you, um, do you have any final, advi uh, final advice for those thinking about a career in software um, or the tech industry uh, as a whole? Well, obviously, I'm slightly biased, but my advice would be to think about doing a portfolio. So I think doing something like that, even if it's just 10 minutes with one sheet of paper, 
think about the why, the what, the how and the where, um, and let that focus you into what interests you. Um, what, what do you really care about learning about? What gaps do you see? I'd always advocate doing a bit of research on a job site called um, IT Jobs Watch um, in the UK. And that gives you um, lots and lots of, of, it's almost big data analysis on salary trends, um, what uh, skills are required for what job role. So they crawl through um, all the jobs on the market and they find trends for those. So if you're not sure what it takes, go and take a look on IT Jobs Watch and type in the, the, the job that you're thinking of and, and see what's there. Um, my kind of bonus points with a portfolio, if you're struggling to get in somewhere in quality assurance and you know the company that you want to work for, is try and do something that's specific to them. Look at the technology that they use. Look on their job sites to see um, the, the kind of things that they're developing, the tools they're using, and show those off. Show that you can learn those um, and have a portfolio, you know, I mean, super massive brownie points. If you can have a portfolio where you're testing their website, um, guess who's going to be remembered at interview? That's um, great advice. And you say that they tailor what you're doing, tailor your job application, but tailoring your portfolio, can you really? Yeah, yeah. So pivot. Just, Pivot it, <laughs> pivot it for sure. Um, but also just make use of the amount of free stuff we have available to us. My other advice would be if you're if you're kind of I mean, this is a contentious one because um, AI and chat GPT can be a little bit marmite for some people. But I, I think people at the start of their careers should really think about how they can leverage chat GPT to help them with almost the glue work. So with the boring repeti repetitive stuff that you may get no credit for, um, but is expected that you will kind of do in whatever time that you have, take advantage that we've got this amazing, uh, this amazing system that can do that work for you. And um, don't let that system take the credit. <laughs> yeah. Um, think about things like uh, uh, popping your CV in there and making sure it's, it's, reading correctly um writing blog articles for you uh researching things all of this stuff use this free tool to help get you where you need uh so that could give you a huge a huge advantage because i don't think people at the start of their careers are are really knowledgeable about things like chat gpt but it could be a big a big free win for you so that would be my my advice Amazing. And, and you're right. I think also at the beginning of your career, you're so focused on, I just want to get in. I just want to get my first role. And maybe you just, you know, completely miss those things and how they're going to help you massively as you go through your career anyway. And, and, and as you've advocated throughout this podcast, you know, just it's it's a journey for you to be able to record what you're doing anyway. And um, so when you're ready to, to for that promotion or moving on, it's all there. Um, ready to show off exactly what you can do mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful thank you that is such a lovely point to end it on um so thank you so much it's been so interesting to have you on with us today it's, it's been an absolute pleasure good thank you so much for having me it's been lovely to talk to you good thank you and for everybody listening as always thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again next time